Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aray Shairi Podcast, your home for everything poetry. This is the place where we bring you a world of poetry and a world of poets. Today, we are fortunate enough to have with us Sunny Amungeywa. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, it's good to be here. Awesome. So I met Sanyamu through another event we were doing sometime last year. Was it? It was Halloween, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. We were doing a Halloween event last year and Sanyamu sent in a submission and I was like, we need this girl in our lives. And today we get to know everything and anything there is to know about Sanyamu Ngeiwa. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's start with your name because when people hear Sanyamu Ngeiwa, our DJ till date cannot say your name. Mm -hmm. So what is the origin of your name and why did you did, why did you decide to go with your original name instead of picking an alias? I think I was just very passionate about the name that my parents gave me. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it does sound pretty unique. It's very, very catchy on its own. If I come to a show and I hear a Sanya Mungayo is coming, I'll be like, um, could you say that again one more time and a bit slower? I really, I really, really like your name. So you went with it because it's original. Yeah, exactly. And also because um, people find it very hard to pronounce. You know, the DJ <laughs> was like, I've taken two weeks to say the name. So yeah. here we go, Sainamu. And it was like, still two no. Weeks, right? <laughs> So it was, um, I think it's just very cool because I often insist on people pronouncing my name correctly. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just, it's my name, there's nothing else. I don't have a stage name, I wouldn't want to have one, it's just me. All right, so for everybody out there, it is not Sunny, it is not Sanan, Sanamu, or whatever. It is Sunny Amu Ngeiwa. Say it until you can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Try and write it out down below in our comments. Try and write it out. Let's see what you come up with. How long have you been doing poetry for? Um, poetry in itself, it's been a bit shorter, but if we talk about writing in general, it's been so many years because I've gone writing when I was about eight. I'm gonna say eight, my parents mm -hmm. say six. Mm -hmm. And that was, six is quite Why do they early. say six and you say eight? Because I don't want to be overzealous, you know, mm. I don't want to say, oh, I began writing when I was six. I was so born I, like this. <laughs> six, I even have teeth and I don't know. Uh -huh. I've never, I don't know. Six <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I say eight because it's more believable, it's more reasonable. And That's when you about. are conscious about what you're doing. Right. And I kind of progressed from writing short fiction and mm -hmm. compositions and longer things to being brief about and very direct and writing poetry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that happened like let's say when I was 13 mm -hmm. so yes yeah, about six seven years ago so why poetry there's music mm -hmm. there's drawing there's so many other things to do out there in the creative industry why poetry specifically um, poetry doesn't necessarily have a story you know uh, people can just write a bunch of words yeah as they rhyme they sound good mm -hmm. that's poetry and you'll find someone like personally there are things I write that don't have a meaning uh -huh. and then I find people who are like I really understood it but how did you understand and I didn't write it? it yeah, you personally didn't even yeah, understand exactly. it when you wrote it. But I don't ask them, I just say, okay, that's so cool, because mm -hmm. same. Because it's really cool that they're clever enough to get that, and I couldn't, you know. Mm -hmm. So basically, poetry is just very free, and anything can be poetry, and poetry is the root of a lot of other things. You find a lot of rappers. Yeah. Like, um, I really like Denzel Curry, and mm -hmm. him, he began with poetry and kind of progressed into, well, music and rap, and it's really cool for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, poetry is kind of the root of a lot of things and it could be immersed in so many other We were actually having that conversation earlier today. People were, we were trying to compare poetry and hip-hop and we realized they're sort of actually like the same thing. It's just now you have to decide do you want to sing out your words or do you want to 
to recite them. So that's that's really really cool that you chose poetry, and most of us are very very happy because now we have Saniamu the poet. Because otherwise we would have had Saniamu the hip hop artist. Yeah, and there or, was some some rapper there. Yeah, Whoa. some random like little Saniamu, little Whoa. Saniamu. Yeah. No 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 guys, do not encourage it. Do not encourage it. We have enough of them out there. I think I'm gonna convert. No, 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 we're not even going to let you. Okay. We won't let you. <laughs> Us and the Arashiri community do not let her convert. Do not let her. Ah. So what are your pastime hobbies? What do you like to do for fun that eventually turns around and feeds your poetry? Um, well, I listen to a lot of music, like all genres, all languages, mm -hmm. and I just, it kind of steers me to it. I think my music app has the most hours like uh, all my other apps. Yeah. So I listen to a lot of music, I watch a lot of films, because mm -hmm. films also kind of inspire me. Mm -hmm. And oh, I sound so boring. Um, <laughs> that's basically, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> yeah, I really like doing all that. Mm -hmm. And occasionally I, occasionally I partake in yeah. little fun times. Occasionally. Yes. Nobody can stop reggae. Nobody someone. can stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I want to go into the music. Is there a specific genre you listen to that inspires you to do your poetry? Um, absolutely not. But um, it's very different. I listen to a lot of rap music, not the kind of rap that's like, oh, I came from poor family in ghetto. I listen to mm. rap. I call it. I, I call I it know. prosperity rap. I don't want to talk about what it talks about, but yeah. I listen to that other kind of rap, mm -hmm. and I think it makes me feel very. It, it gives me enthusiasm. It makes, it it makes you dig into yourself. Yeah. I'm very, very curious about this other topic of rap that you don't want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. Um, my favorite rapper, female, is called Baby Mother. People don't listen to her, and that's okay because she's like my little secret for now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> until she becomes mainstream, and mm -hmm. then you over it. No. Okay. And then, like, <laughs> other other people, Kevin Gates and a lot of slow tie, just really cool rappers. Yeah. Okay, you sound like you would be into the retro kind of hip hop, like mm -hmm. Erika Badu, old ancient kind of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is there a favorite topic you like writing about when you're doing your poetry? Hmm. Actually, what do you find yourself writing about the most? Probably sentimentalism and emotional stuff and feelings, and I think it's very easy for me to channel that energy into writing stuff like that because mm -hmm. I tend to not okay you know there's a bar between reality and imagination and i tend to delve into the imagination realm yeah like a bit a more mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of emotions are things you imagine things you listen to things you watch mm -hmm. things you wish could be done for you to you and so yeah i find myself writing about feelings a lot and the psychedelic kind of poetry yeah so if you have if you're out there and you're wondering what sanyamu would like done to her <laughs> Just check out her blog, her WordPress, <laughs> her videos. Just listen to her poems. Do some research. Take some notes, and you'll figure out what she wants done to her. Because of miscommunication. All right. Any any closing words? Any words of encouragement for upcoming poets, artists? Um. Yeah. A lot of people say stuff like keep writing, keep doing this that's not the problem because i've always written mm -hmm. but the problem was sharing so start sharing your work start putting yourself out there everything i've done so far that's gotten me places out of irony i submitted to array like oh this is cool there's a poster my friend sent me let me just send it whatever happens happens and now i'm here mm -hmm. and yeah Start so take the risk. Mm -hmm. Take the risk. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Sandy. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Woo. Thank you so much. That was Sanya Mungeyo, and now she will grace us with our performance. I'm Mungeyo, and I'm going to read two pieces off of my new book, which is out in May. It's called All Fall Down. And um, it's not published yet, it's undergoing the process and I thought I'd give it a leak and to further announce I'm writing another book and it's halfway through, it's called Issue, which I will read the second piece from. So thank you and I hope I need to do something. What's the last thing you dreamt about? Did you dream of clouds and roses or of thorns and fires? Did you wake up in shock and amusement or in fear and misery? Did you dream of your dreams coming true? A 
a dream of freedom from everything that's ever held you captive. That one day you won't have to worry about not having money or being alone. That eventually you'll be someone who's themselves. Or maybe you dreamt that you will no longer live a life without love, or worse still, a love without life. Maybe your dreams are bleak, full of shapes, numbers, and swirling colors that make you feel like they're leading you somewhere. Fantasies of cartoon characters and video game cities that give you the ultimate realization that we're all puffs of carbon, puffing carbon, trying to stay relevant. What I deserve you and what did I do to deserve my crisis? Is there a power in dreaming? Because a dream could be a destination, a happy and fearless place of actions without consequences and repercussions from no retort. So ultimately to answer myself, a dream could also be a message, the kind I often ignore. I have no idea what the last thing I dreamt of was. Who owes who now that you've torn me apart? And my most inherent intricacies are public. There's some shame to dwelling within all those minds and a struggle to figure out whether you owe me gratitude or I owe you an apology. Should I thank you for letting me control your sentiments or should you send me a sorry for working my hands like a puppeteer? All I can give you is some fake love and a bunch of lousy excuses and heartfelt promises to make sure my poetry stops rhyming and starts making sense and that all that glitters in my pages is actual gold and whichever old man said all that should be put to shame. And I promise to kill all these butterflies even if murdering them leaves scars in my stomach.